Hi, my name is Dr. Larkin Sanders, and welcome to um, a special episode of The Clever Clarinetist. And today we are talking all about reeds. It's a hot topic, to be sure, for all clarinetists, no matter what age you are, no matter what level. Um, everyone always wants to know about everybody's reeds, everyone's reeds business. So, um, I'm going to kind of walk you through read basics. We're not going to talk about the manufacturing process. There are tons of videos out there. D'Addario and Company has a beautiful video about their manufacturing process and I'll be featuring their cane reads today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to know when it's time to step up in strength to a harder read um, and how to go about trying new reads and what to listen for as you're trying new reads. And we'll also try a little bit of some synthetic reads and I'll talk about read maintenance and care. All right, so let's get into it. Today I'm gonna to be playing um, a Selmer Celis Presence Prologue from my shop. Here we are, this clarinet is currently for sale. If you're interested in, in trying it or one of the other prologues in my shop, please feel free to give me a, a call or a chat. Um, you can reach out to me at Larkin at cleverclarinetist.com or visit cleverclarinetist.com to shop my entire inventory. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started. Um, I'm just going to be working with a three octave F major scale for my trials today. And this instrument is in B flat. Okay, so I have currently my ideal setup happening. I have my mouthpiece. It's a D'Addario um, Evolution mouthpiece. It is considered a medium open mouthpiece or just a medium mouthpiece, I think. Um, it is a special edition marbled mouthpiece. You can see it's got some swirly colors in it. Um, there's a very subtle difference between a plain black rubber uh, mouthpiece and a marbled rubber mouthpiece. I do actually prefer the sound marginally of a marbled rubber mouthpiece to the regular rubber mouthpiece. I recommend trying them for yourself to see what you think. Um, I am sure that my opinion is not universal. Um, I'm also working with a Hexa rose gold ligature. It's super pretty. It's got my name on it. And I'm playing my ideal cane read, which is a D'Addario Reserved Classic three and a half. All right, let's do the thing. I'm gonna play my three octave F major scale once slurred and then again articulated. <sighs> in my stash right now. I think it works pretty well and sounds pretty good. Now let's talk about how to know when you're needing to move up in strength to a reed. I'm going to put on a reed that I know is going to be way too soft for me, um, which is a D'Addario Reserve Strength 2. It's so fun. I've never played on this before. So it's going to be an adventure for everybody. Well, I've never played on this specific reed. This one is brand new. I have done this before, I swear. Um, so when, when it's time to move up in strength on a read, you're basically going to notice a few different things. Um, that playing high is difficult. So the higher you go, the more often the clarinet starts to speak too low. You start to like under blow the register. Um, your pitch will also go flat. Um, articulation will be a little bit more challenging and you'll have very little dynamic range. If you feel like you're putting all this air into your clarinet and you're just not making any volume, the reed is probably too soft. So I think those are the four basic indicators that you need a stronger reed. It also will depend on the tip opening of your mouthpiece and everyone is different. So what's important about that is that um, just because you're playing on a softer reed strength than the person sitting next to you doesn't mean that you are an inferior clarinet player. It just means that you have different equipment and a different mouth. Right. All right, so this is a strength two. Let's see if I can make this three octave F major scale happen. <laughs> So that 
that read was very clearly too soft because you could tell the higher I got, the more unstable it got. It got wobbly, and you could almost not tell the difference between any of the pitches at the very top of the scale because it was too soft. I could feel it shaking in my mouth. It was a really uncomfortable feeling. So now let's do a full on read trial. I'm going to be working with the Diderio Reserve Reads today. I've got three different models. I have the Diderio Reserve. I have Reserve Classic. And I've got Evolution. These reads are all different because they have different cuts. Um, I'm basically starting with the thinnest blank and going to the thickest blank. The thinnest blank being the Reserve. Um, these are traditional cut reeds. They have a thinner blank and a rounded tip and a shorter vamp. The vamp is the slanty part of the reed that actually vibrates. Um, the Reserve Classic is kind of the middle ground. Um, it has a more squared cut tip and it's a thicker blank than the Reserve reed. Um, I think it makes it, these are my preferred reeds and I think it's easier to articulate and achieve different colors in my playing using this reed over the Reserve. But Again, none of these reads are more professional than the other. It just depends on your personal preference. All right, and then we have the Evolution, which is a fairly new line of read. It's the thickest blank out of all of them, um, which means it's gonna have a longer vamp as well. It's also not filed, which means that the corners of the vamp um, are not shaved down like the rest of them. I will try and remember to show you an up close image of it. So we're gonna start with the Reserve three and a half. Again, these are all brand new reads, so I haven't tested them before. Um, one of the reasons I really like the Diderio reads is that um, they have probably the most precise manufacturing process um, that I've at least ever witnessed or ever known about. Um, if you ever find yourself out in Burbank, California, I recommend seeing if you can take a tour of their um, facilities. Um, Having said that, reeds are still um, an organic substance, and by virtue of that, no matter how precise they are cut, they will still create variations. Um, so I've got two reeds of each blank set out, which is technically a sample. Um, we'll go through all six of them and decide which one we like best. <laughs> This tip is cut closer to the bark, which means the cane is denser. So with the thinner blank, you actually get a slightly stiffer read. A really good thing about the Reserve reads as opposed to the Reserve Classic is that they respond really quickly. So they're great for young people who are interested in moving up from your Ricos and Royals and your, your beginner reads, basically. It's a great place to start because the read vibrates very quickly. <laughs> guarantee that I'm going to like because this is what I play on normally, but now you'll hear it in context. in the rest of that bar. 
box. That'll be fun. Um, all right, now we're gonna go on to the evolution read, and I'm gonna try and hold up um, the re evolution read against the reserve classic that I just played, and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference between a filed and an unfiled read. So we've got, whoop, there we go. This is the evolution. This is the reserve classic. You can see that this reserve classic is shaved in the corners, and this one is not. Um, one is not necessarily better than the other. They are just different, and it depends on your personal preference. I recommend, if you have the opportunity, to try them both. Now I'm going to touch on something that might be a little bit rudimentary, but it always helps to review. Talking about putting a reed on the mouthpiece. All right, I think that's the first thing we learn how to do as baby clarinetists. So what I do is I put my ligature on pretty loose on my mouthpiece. As you can see, the mouthpiece is connected to the instrument already. I have a ligature on. It's very loose. And I'm basically going to maneuver the ligature around with my, my first finger and my thumb back here. I'm going to take the reed and very gently place it, the butt, under the back of my ligature. And then I'm going to move my fingers to the side. You'll notice I never touch the tip of the reed. I never push it down with the tip of my finger. I just kind of gently push it side to side with my thumb and middle finger. Um, and I use the thumb on my right hand to move the butt of the reed around into the right place. If you have, uh, if, if you're wondering about which direction your ligature goes on, I know my screw is on the front of my mouthpiece. Um, ligatures are a right hand bias thing. So your ligature will always, screws will all be, always be in the right hand. If you're wondering if you might have an inverted or a standard mouth, uh, ligature, that's how you figure it out. All right, so now I have my evolution read on. I am using a straight three and a half plus on the evolution and this is for two reasons. First of all, these are the thickest blank of reeds that I have, which means the tip is cut farthest away from the bark, which means in theory it's going to be the softest of all of them. Um, the other reason is that I currently do not have any three and a halfs in my inventory, and we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, and I'm not getting any anytime soon. So I'm going to work with this three and a half plus. It's only a quarter strength, harder than what I would normally pick out, which is a three and a half. Um, Maybe I'll really like it. One way to find out. <sighs> of the articulation and I have a feeling that's actually due to the fact that it is an unfiled reed remember the corners are not shaved down um, some people say that unfiled reeds give you a little bit more control over your sound which would make sense as far as the control of the articulation I did felt feel like my sound was a little like very centered and very focused also for young people uh, you'll notice I'm wetting both ends of the reed and that's because wetting this part of the reed makes a great seal on the back side of your mouthpiece. It's like a little suction cup. And you'll notice if you start doing that, that your reeds will sound less airy and they'll last longer between soakings. <laughs> Maybe that's me, maybe it's three, maybe it's a little bit of both. All right, so we made our way through all of the cane reeds. We started with the reserve, we went to the reserve classic, and we finished with the evolution. There, it's orange. And now we're gonna go to synth synthetic reeds. And my current favorite synthetic reed is the Silverstein Ambipoly reed. They have two different cuts, and we're gonna try both of them in strength three and a half. Um, in my opinion, they, the strengths of these synthetic reeds align very closely to the strength of a cane reed. Um, they have the Primo cut and the Vivace cut, and I think they kind of mimic um, the Reserve and Reserve Classic. I think the Primo cut is a little bit more like the Reserve Classic because it has a thicker blank, 
and the Primo is a little bit more like the Reserve because it has a thinner blank. Unlike most synthetic reeds, these are porous reeds, so they actually improve and vibrate better when you wet them, which is kind of cool. Um, I always prefer to wet my synthetic reeds anyway because I feel like it seals better on the mouthpiece if they have a little bit of wet, just like a suction cup. They're a little bit harder to line up because they're so slippery on the back side, so bear with me. All right. tried these two cuts formally yet to decide which cut I like best so after I try this I think we'll, I'll have a an official decision I am still playing on some the legacy cut which is their original cut um, a lot of people had issues with the higher registers being out of tune or particularly flat I didn't really have that problem um, so I didn't feel the need to upgrade um, but these are available in my shop for a trial if you're interested in trying synthetic reads but you're not ready to commit to them um, you can always give them a try in my studio and I have an awesome discount for you. All right. Vivace. <laughs> but I really like the articulation and the accuracy that I was able to achieve um, with the Vivace cut. All right, so we have tried all the reads. Um, if you're in a classroom setting, now's a great time to hit pause and decide which read you liked the best and why. All right, now that we're back, we're gonna talk about read storage. So I keep my reads in this lovely box. This is the Diderio. Um, Read case. I think that's what it's called. It's a Dario read case. It holds eight reads. You can see. And it has a gasket seal, which just means that um, when you close it, no moisture or air is moving in or out. And it has a place for a humidity packet. And these are basically the same humidity packets that you would find in like a cigar shop and use it in a humidor. Um, but you can buy them under the uh, Diderio label and I think from others as well um, but as you can see it holds eight reads so it's pretty compact as far as large cases are concerned um, and eight reads is really all I need right now there was a time when I used to carry around 20 reads I have that example for you as well um, these little guys are I think $25 and I think you can get them just about anywhere on the internet um, this is another great way to keep your reads uh, <laughs> This is one of my old reed storage systems that has 20 reeds in it. So as you can see, I'm using a very high-tech plastic bag to keep my reeds. Um, but I really like these little guys. These little guys are like $5. And they're cool because they have um, slatted tables that you can leave your reed on, which helps them to dry out better and make sure that they always dry out flat. Um, these are great, affordable options. And they come in bright colors. I love color coding and color coordinating, so you can see that I've got a little piece of the rainbow going on. And like I said, you can keep these in plastic bags, and I always would fold it over like this and never actually seal my plastic bags so that they would air out slowly. Um, plastic bags are a great tool if you're using little reed cases like these um, because they hold the moisture in the case. Another great option is this little Rico reed guard. These are great, these are like $3 at a music store. Again, keep them in a plastic bag and you're all good to go. Um, so that's basically everything I know about reeds right now. I'd love to go over a reed adjustment with you sometime or if you'd like to set up an appointment with me or consultation, I'd be happy to teach you how to wield one of these, a reed geek. 
Um, they're, in my opinion, the best tools for read adjustment on the market today. That and you can fly with them. TSA approved. All right. So thank you for um, hanging out with me today and talking about reads and looking at reads and listening to reads. Everyone's favorite thing. If you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave um, some comment below. If you have a favorite read, please let me know what that is. I would love to know. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to me at Larkin at cleverclarinetist.com and visit my website, cleverclarinetist.com. And I look forward to working with you guys in the future.